In this video, we'll be talking about multiple choice question coding. To start, go to the Create button at the top left and then click on Question. This will take you to the Question Editor. Here, you can manipulate various characteristics of the question, including the name, the mode, the instructions, and the keys. Let's scroll down and look at some of our various components. First, the mode has already been selected as multiple choice. This is the default mode, so we don't need to change anything. In the question field, we'll add our instructions. Determine the quadrant where the point 2, 4 is located. At the end, we've added some special characters to denote the location of the answer blank, which in this case means the location of the answer choices. In the answer field, we're going to add several things, including the key and our distractors. The key goes on the first line, quadrant 1. Every additional line after the first is a distractor, such as quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. You can have as many distractors as you'd like, including just a single distractor, two distractors, three distractors as we have here, or more. Let's go ahead and test preview our question. You can see the instructions and the vertical list of answer choices. You'll notice that the position of the answer choices is automatically randomized. If we select quadrant 1 and submit, we get the green check. And if we select something else and submit, we get the red X. If we click on the Show New Randomization button at the top left, our answer choices automatically shuffle with each new randomization. This is now a fully formed multiple choice question. We could give it a name, save it, and add it to our assignments. We could also customize the experience further by randomizing the values in the point using Perl. So now that we have the basics of multiple choice question coding, let's consider two important options to customize the experience for students. Consider the question, the point 2 comma 4 is located in the blank quadrant. This is essentially the same question that we had before, rewritten to allow for a different style. In the answer field, I've already written the key and the distractors. The key appears on the first line, first, and the distractors, second, third, and fourth, appear on subsequent lines. Let's go ahead and test preview our question. We can see our instructions and our vertical list of answer choices. We can also see that we have a format problem as our vertical list appears directly in our sentence. To solve that, we'll use the first of our two options. In the question editor, on the first line with the key, we'll open Perl. We'll specify a special variable, $pulldown, all capital letters, and we'll set that variable equal to 1. We then close Perl. By setting this variable equal to 1, we're telling the system to use a dropdown or a pulldown menu instead of the vertical list of answer choices. When we preview the question, we can see that pull-down menu in our instructions. We can also see that the positions of our answer choices are randomized. The answer choices in this particular question already have a natural chronological order. It may make sense to prevent the randomization of the positions. This brings us to our second option. Let's go back to the question editor and in the same Perl statement, we're going to specify another special variable, $ordered, all caps. This variable does two things. First, it fixes the order of the answer choices so that they appear in the same order as they do in the answer field. Second, we set $ordered equal to the position of the correct answer. In this case, $ordered equals 1 means that first is the correct answer. If we were to specify dollar order equals 2, then the word second would be the correct answer. Since the correct answer is first, we'll set dollar order back to 1 and test preview the question. When we click on the drop down menu now, we can see that the answer choices are fixed in chronological order. The two options dollar pull down and dollar order do not have to be used with each other and can be used separately if needed. Finally, if we were to select the word first and submit, we would get the green check. This concludes the video for multiple choice question coding. 
You can look below this video for more information and additional resources.